Welcome to another Tech Help Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's Quick Query is number 31. What is a Quick Queries video? Well, I get tons and tons of questions and emails and comments, and I can't make them all into videos, but I can put them all into a Quick Queries video. So this is kind of a combination of all the rest of the stuff that I get throughout the week. Let's take a look. Let's head to the mailbox first. First up, I get tons of emails just like this one. Now I'm hiding the person's name, not just to not embarrass them, but it's not just them. I probably get 10 or 15 of these a week. And I get people saying, hey, my database isn't working. Can you help me fix it? I, I don't have the time to do individual back and forth, one-on-one -on -one emails with everybody. So if you need help, there's lots of different places you can go to get help. You can post comments. I strongly recommend my forums. I've got awesome forums on my website and a great group of moderators that help me answer questions. So post your question there. And more importantly, I need information. I need details. What's going on? Just don't tell me that it's not working. I need information. Are you getting an error message? What is happening? What's not happening? What have you done? Right? I, the more information you give, the better it is for me to be able to help you. And also check out my troubleshooter on my website. If you're having weird problems, especially, and you can't figure it out and you've Googled it and you don't see anybody has an answer for it, try my troubleshooter. It's got all kinds of common sense things you can try to fix your problem, okay? Okay, don't just tell me your database isn't working. I need details, right? Here's another great question that comes up from one of my silver members, Tom. Tom said he's trying to open a record set with an SQL statement and you get an error message saying that Access cannot find the table or SQL scheme. See folks, he showed me what he did and he told me what error message he was getting. Very, very helpful, okay? Now, take a second. Can you see what the problem is? Pause the video if you have to. Did you get it? Take a look right here. Do you see the problem now? He's setting a variable equal to this, right? That's the name of his table, select star from table. But then he's sending that as a string to the open record set. So it's basically open record set is getting SQL string, not the value in SQL string, the actual word SQL string. Congratulations to Donald, one of my platinum members. He got it. He answered it right. Okay. And yep, Donald is correct. He gets the prize. Whatever the prize is, I don't know. We'll figure something out. Right. <laughs> but be careful. Quotes matter. Spelling matters right? Brackets matter, all those little tiny details. And this is something, Tom, that happens all the time. It, this, uh, it's a common mistake. Don't feel bad. Making this mistake three or 4,000 times will, will help you to remember not to do it again in the future. I know I've done this a ton of times myself. Next up, Shadow Dragon asked about Access Day and if they're going to be streaming the presentation. For those of you who don't know, Access Day is in Redmond, Washington on March 28th of this year, 2025, hosted by Armin Stein. There's a bunch of uh, MVPs presenting, not me. I'm not presenting. I'm just going as an attendee, but you can find out more information here. I'll put a link down below. But unfortunately, no, they are not live streaming the presentation. Uh, it'll be an in-person attendee conference only. So hope to see you there. Michael says, regarding my naming conventions, and this was something that came up in last week's Quick Queries 30, um, I use a, an F to designate form. So customer form is customer F, right? Ours are reports. And if you're gonna know, gonna need to know which type of object you're opening, I use my naming convention. So I can just look at the right one character, right? If it's an F or an R. And what I said in this video is, if you're not using my naming convention, all you have to do is just make another field in the table that indicates if it's a form or a report. And it's not really a lot of extra work. It's just one little extra character that you got to put in the table to indicate if it's a form or a report. Could you look it up somehow? You probably could. Um, there's VBA code where you can determine what all the objects are, but I think it's not a, a ton of extra work to just simply put an F or an R or, a, you know, a checkbox is form or, you know, is it a report or a form, yes or no? So that's a little extra work, but yeah, just use my naming conventions. <laughs> but I know a lot of people also use different types of naming conventions. So whatever your naming convention is, just use that. 
you know, a lot of people use this old, what is it, Hungarian notation, right? FRM customers for forms, RPT for reports. If that's your naming convention, then just look at the first three letters there, right? It's unique to your database. I'm just showing you the Legos. You can put them together however you want. AZ Pool Care Pros says, please, please keep leaving your goofs in the video. See, I just goofed there and I just left it in. I made mistakes and remembered from watching your goofs what I did wrong and how to fix it. That's what I, that's how I feel. When I first started doing this, I, if I made a mistake, I would be like, oh, I got to stop. I got to edit the video, take that out, redo it. And then somewhere along the line, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I discovered that, you know, if, if I make these mistakes, chances are you guys are going to probably make the same mistakes at some point. So that's why I started leaving them in at first. And then eventually I start intentionally making mistakes because now I've done this so many times and for so long that I know exactly what mistakes are coming up. <laughs> so I'll make the mistake intentionally. And sometimes I'll even, I'll even preface it with, a, okay, watch this. So this is what you don't want to do. But um, it's, it's hard because some people, you know, a lot of people agree with me. They say, yeah, leave the mistakes in. Some people complain because, oh, you're wasting time. Well, I don't know. I guess I need to make two tracks for every course. I got to make a fast track for people who don't want all the bull. And then I need to, you know, the one for people who actually want to learn this stuff and take the time. So I'm, I'm of the latter. I'm not in a hurry. I want to learn it. Whenever I look for stuff to learn myself, I want to take my time and immerse myself in it. But I know not everyone's the same way. So but thanks for the comment. And I'm going to keep leaving the goofs. I mean, the mistakes. I mean, the problems in the videos. So thank you. <laughs> Got a lot of great comments on my changing clocks is dumb video, which I'll put a link down below if you guys want to see them all. But um, yes, I am pro 24 hour clock. Although I don't have them all in my house because my wife would probably yell at me. But I like 24 hour time. I'm. I'm like I said in this video, I'm for getting rid of time zones completely. I am pro Celsius, pro metric system, but I will only call the letter Z Z if I'm referring to the Rush song Y Y Z or Toronto Airport. Aside from that, it's Z, but it does sound a lot like D and G and D. So I guess Z's not that bad. <laughs> Shane says I've got my front end on my land drive. My users are using virtual machines. And I can't provide each user with a front end file any suggestions. 15 users with no more than six on a shift. If you've got people simultaneously using your database, they really should have their own front end file. Each user should have their own copy of the front end file on their local drive. Or if you're using virtual machines and they're logging in, they should each have their own virtual machine session. And that virtual machine should have its own drive with its own copy of the front end. If not, you're going to run into problems eventually because access doesn't like it when two people are working on the same front end file at the same time. It's a common problem. I see all the time. People take a database, whether it's split or not, and they put the database up on a share like a server drive. And then they have five people working from the same front end, same database file, and it invariably corrupts. So back up what you're doing <laughs> routinely, nightly, and, um, and, and do your best to try to give each user their own copy of the front end. That's the best way to do it. If not, good luck to you, sir. The Ryan wants to know if uh, hiding the button is better than denying access when someone's trying to log on. Um, that, that's up to you. You can either you know give them a message and say, hey, nope, wrong, or you can hide the button completely or do whatever you want. They're your databases. They're your Legos. You put them together however you want. I'm just showing you lots of different ways you can do things. Either one works. That's fine. Hide the button completely until they enter in the wrong information or the right information, not until they enter the wrong information. If you want to control, you know, um, uh, if, you, if you have a main menu and then a, an accounting menu and you don't want your regular users to see the accounting menu button at all, that's fine. In fact, you can give your accounting people a whole completely different front end if you want. Totally up to you. I just show you lots of different methods. You can do whatever you want with it. Next up, Power J3V says, this was great. He's talking about my large checkbox video. Until I went to a continuous form. On the continuous form, the checkbox toggles fine, but the caption toggles all the records instead of one record. Can you explain how to get it to only work? Yeah. Um, th the technique that I use in this video, and for those of you who don't know what video I'm talking about, it's this guy, where I show you how to take the little tiny default checkbox and make a bigger one. And then... the with this bigger one, though, we're using a, basically a graphic, an image, 
our own custom button and then the caption we can change, but it only works on single forms. The, the reason why is because if you've got a continuous form, okay, you got a continuous form and you got fields in here, first name, last name, state, and so on. This is basically the same control with just different records in it. If you have VBA code that says first name, bat color equals red, it changes all of them. Okay, so you can't do things like change a caption or change the property of, a, of an image or any of that kind of stuff or change the visible property with VBA like that. Now, there are some tricks you can play. Like in this video, I show you how to hide a field in a continuous form. You don't make the field not visible because visible is a property of the text box itself. And as soon as you make one of them not visible, you make them all not visible. So the technique that I show in this video utilizes conditional formatting. All right, so I guess you could do something with conditional formatting to make it kind of look like a bigger checkbox, but you'd really have to play with it. If enough of you want to see me try, then post a comment down below. Maybe I'll give it a shot, right? Squeaky wheel gets the grease. But yeah, unfortunately, the technique from this video is only going to work with a single form. Sorry. Ariel Ramirez says he's Googled how to open several instances of a form, but my videos haven't covered it yet. He wants to make sure he does it right to avoid ending up with a Thomas Riker clone, like from Second Chances. Um, yeah, we don't want any uh, fake Will Rikers running around the universe, do we? Didn't they, that happened. He came back in, uh, was it Deep Space Nine? And caused some problems uh, working with the Maquis. But anyways, I have covered it. I just have not covered it in a tech help video. I covered it in Access Developer 47, where we can make multiple copies of the same form opening up. So if you want to have like three customers open at once, you can. This is fairly complicated. I spend a good hour on this. So it's beyond what I would cover in a tech help video. Tech help videos are shorter, like 10, 15 minutes, right? Um, so if you want, check out Developer 47. It's on my website. There's the link right there. And yeah, yeah, no more clones. Although I am thinking of saving my dog's DNA. Or the inevitable uh I, I i would like another one of him eventually but it's kind of pricey so we'll, we'll see <laughs> i just thought this one was cute so i had to share it it's 1 45 a.m and i spent all day trying to work this out learning access finally climb into bed and decide to watch a little youtube and there you are <laughs> i'm tempted to get up and try it out but being well into my 60s i need my beauty sleep yeah i get you i just turned 52 myself and i need my beauty sleep too if i don't get a solid eight i'm a crab in the morning so don't mess with me and my brain doesn't turn on if i haven't slept well and i need my brain so i can do what i do but yeah i watch a couple of uh youtube channels myself uh when i'm ready to go to bed i love watching space documentaries that but they can't be ones that have like all kinds of orchestral music and like loud noises and stuff it's got to be calm and and, uh, and and relaxing and it's interesting but not interesting enough like when they release a new episode i get stuck watching it because I, I might learn something new but i like to watch ones that i've already seen and it puts me right to sleep i love these guys cosmo they make awesome videos um lots of good content but it's not like there's no loud like i love neil degrasse tyson in that but you know when he gets together with chuck nice and they start goofing and laughing it wakes me right up so I can't watch Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, Star Talk to put me to sleep. But Cosmo is perfect for going to sleep. The content's great, but after you've seen the video once or twice, it's it's nice and chill and it's relaxing. And you have to get YouTube Premium, people, because then you don't have to watch commercials. Well, I shouldn't tell you that because then I don't get paid for advertising. Well, actually, I think I still get a little bit. Of, I get fractions of a penny for YouTube Premium users. But check out Cosmo. I'll put a link down below. If you like if you like space stuff, they got really good space. I'm a science nerd, so I love this stuff. And, and no, I can't watch Star Trek going to bed either. Because then even if it's an episode I've seen, I want to watch the whole thing and I pay attention to it. So Star Trek before bed is no good. All right, folks, that's going to do it for another quick queries. Uh, my dinner is on the way. We just ordered dinner. So I, I have to say goodbye now. And um, <laughs> that's going to do it for today. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you on Monday with a new video. Take care. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video.
Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.